Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in. My name is Ian Ellis and uh, this is the third video in Vincent van Gogh. It's, we're focusing on his technique. The first two videos, as you see on my left here, if you've not seen, you need to tune in before you see this one. Uh, that's one where you're focusing on the van Gogh's aims, where the, how um, or what he was trying to achieve when he was painting. For instance, is how did he achieve the glow? And um, the other one was f focusing on the color mixing, the physical color mixing. Um, which actually led me and prepared the preparation for the, for the painting you see behind me. Um, I'm going to do a bit of narration uh, as, I, as I paint that painting, so I hope you enjoy that. Thank you. As you can see in front of me is a, a painting ready to paint for Van Gogh's cypress trees. Uh, the ground I put down was with acrylic so it dries really quickly and then I drew over with a pen, with a piece of charcoal, um, transferred it onto the screen, so I've got the image all perfectly drawn. Um, and one of the most difficult things is actually getting the ground down. I want to show you that in a in a video where we're going to focusing on different grounds. I spent a year at art school trying to find, put grounds down. Um, what the best way I think is actually mixing a dark color and rubbing in a color on top of a dry white ground. Anyway, you can see me starting to paint. Um, one of the things that's really um, effective about Van Gogh's painting. Uh, is, is technique, is the way he draws with a brush. And it's that that helps you uh, spin around the painting, a bit like a spinning disc. Your eye travels around the painting really quickly. And, um, and what you do, because you, you're traveling around the painting, your eyes are mixed, the, the colors are mixing in your eyes. And, you, and that's where you get the mixing of lights. And that's one of the reasons I think they glow so much is because of his technique and the, the kind of curves everywhere. Your eye travels around it really quickly. You can't really get a, a real focus on one thing. It's not focusing on any detail, it's generalizing. And, uh, and I'm working with a dry brush. What I mean by that is no liquid with my paint. I've not put any um, linseed oil with the paint or turp straight from the tube. And I'm mixing, a, 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 if you want to know about the mixing, you'll have to look at video two and van gogh that will show you all the mix other how i got all the colors and i'm focusing on uh just getting drawing with the brush reason i'm leaving the gap you can see so because it's dry brush i'm still drawing it's not flat color you can see bits of color coming through the bits of the ground coming through the painting and uh, just on the cornfield there you can see i'm starting to just get a bit a bit thicker the paint started coming up a little bit thicker uh, so generally what it's doing is there's a ground underneath it, one flat colour underneath there, uh, drawn with a brush and then I'm going to start more in pasto paint. I mean pasto paint is when you put, you mix your, a lot of paint, drag your brush in and it'll put a lot on your brush and it's a brush mark stays in it. If you use a palette knife you get a groove of paint and you can see the really quite heavy paint I'm using. Um, and if you look at Van Gogh's paintings, actually, they were much heavier than what I was doing. I'm doing this too quickly. He's spending his time. I'm not doing it as quick as you can see. It's a bit fast motion. But um, um, with Van Gogh, you'll see the much thicker paint coming in. If you go and look at his paintings. But he'll have a thin colour underneath. And it, it tends to, when he gets overdoes the line and doesn't get it right first time, you see that it, some of his colours do get a bit clogged up. And his best paintings, I think, are when he kind of puts the ground down and uh, let some of those colors come through, the background color coming through, and then the underneath layers. So there's two layers, and the final third layer is what I'm doing now on the tree. And that's uh, just a case of putting darker colors on the tree. With so it's a kind of drawing, drawing with line. Some of the lines you will need a bit of linseed oil to get the paint to flow a little bit more. Every brush mark I'm doing is trying to emphasize the movement. Everything's drawn, nothing's filled in. He works a bit like pastel, really. Strong colors first, then putting the dark and the light colors on over the top. feel there was a dreading really if the field's perhaps the most hardest thing what i've tried to do is try and emphasize the flatness of the painting which van gogh has done with the way with his brush marks so there's no describing the form of the field it could end up looking at i thought if i was careful not to make it look like it was a sponge cake or something with the foreground really being heavy and everything else just not flowing and, and looking too solid and 3d because that's how we imagine this the field to look but van gogh's very clever he kind of keeps the paint really 
moving. It doesn't emphasize the form too much. It keeps it very flat. And it's hard to believe there's lots of space in the painting, but you can see a lot of the space is created by the idea of the design where things overlap. The, the, the skies go behind the, the cloud. The clouds go be behind the, the um, mountains. The mountains are behind the trees. And this is really a massive part of space. And we all take this for granted, but we just don't realize how much the overlap creates such a fantastic sense of space. Also, the direction of the paint, that bush, as you can see, the direction of the paint is going across a lot of the horizontal lines of the mountains and the fields at the back. And it's creating a really fantastic sense of depth and space. Taking my time, really trying to get those curves right. Using the brush, holding the brush a bit further down so I can get the movement of my brush. As you can see, there's a big contrast in my trees and my background. When I saw the painting after doing this, I really, I've got too much light and dark in it. Um, the painting I saw was much lighter and not so much light and dark. I emphasized the light and dark too much, but that's uh, just my memory of the painting. And I'm obviously I'm working from a, a small uh, uh, photograph of the painting, so it's not particularly helpful. I hope you enjoyed that. Regarding the brushes I used, a size four bristle to start the painting, and to finish the painting off with final lines, I use a size three round bristle. The next painting focused on is Van Gogh's chair. One video is already available on the channel that demonstrates how to mix colours. The next video analyses the colour contrasts of the great painting. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.